Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild Players. The Screen Guild play tonight, You Belong to Me. The starring players, this is Donna Michi. And this is Mary Astor. Tonight, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in a radio adaptation of the Columbia picture, You Belong to Me. Starring Don Amici as Peter Kirk and Mary Astor as Helen Hunt. In the happy, careless days when people still went to the hills for their winter sports, an expert skier comes swooping down a snow-covered slope like this. Then suddenly he spies a pretty girl, takes his eye off the course, and goes like this. Peter Kirk is the fellow's name. Young, handsome, and fabulously rich. The girl is Dr. Helen Hunt. Yes, Helen Hunt, M.D., up here on vacation from Los Angeles. And so, when Peter regains consciousness... Doctor. Oh, doctor, you're swell. And then... Doctor, you're wonderful. And then, Doctor, you are beautiful. Will you marry me? Forget it, Peter. The whole idea is fantastic. Yeah, but Doctor, uh, I mean, Helen, you know I love you. I loved you for three whole days. I, I loved you the very first moment we met. How could you tell? You were unconscious. I love you and you love me. You know you do. Maybe you didn't hurt your leg. Maybe it was your head. You love me, Helen. Suppose I do. Marriage isn't for women like me. I've dedicated my life to medicine. Helen, I love There's you. There's not a moment of my life I can call my own. Helen, I love you. I can never be sure that the day is mine or the night. I can never know when a patient will call. Helen, I love you. Did you hear what I said? Of course I heard. Helen, I love you. <sighs> Peter, I'm not sure. Well, then why don't you stop kissing me? <laughs> Helen, we, we can't fight this, love. It's too strong. We'll be married this afternoon, won't we? Oh, darling. Well, no one can say I didn't try. Well, Mrs. Dr. Kirk, this is the old homestead, and it's all yours. Do you like it? 32 rooms, 26 baths. Peter, I'll need a map to get around. <laughs> well, I, I told you what Dad and Mother left me. After all, what's money? I'll let you know when I find out. Mm. Remember, we've only been married three hours. Um, is this the part of the house where we'll live? Yeah, I like this upstairs suite best. We'll live up here, eat up here, and grow old together happily. Peter, darling, promise me one thing. All right. Never let me do what I've dreamed about, like sleeping till noon and having breakfast in bed. Make me get up early and brush my teeth and shower like a good, honest human being. Promise? Yeah, I promise. Oh, Helen, when I realize that we're together... <laughs> oh, darn. Come in. Mr. Kirk, sir, I've had your luggage taken out of the car and dinner will be brought up in just a moment. Very good, Moody. And Mrs. Kirk, your office call. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mr. Vandermeer, he seemed quite anxious to reach you. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, you're quite welcome. Uh, now, Peter, you were Say, saying... Uh, how did those people get our number? I wired my office. Uh, darling, weren't you going Mr. to... Mr. Vandermeer, too? He got it from the office, probably. Peter, you were showing me the suite. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, th this man who called... Van? Oh, Van's one of my patients. Van? Short for Vandermeer, silly. Oh. Well, he uh, sounds like a very substantial man. About, uh, about 60, huh? Maybe, maybe 61? No, he's just a few years older than you. Oh, oh. Well, uh, have you forgotten the 40-cent tour? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, on that side is the master bedroom, and mm -hmm. over there is the guest room, which you can forget I mentioned. <laughs> Helen, I don't want you to think I'm jealous. It's, it's just that I love you so much. Oh, I love you, too. When you have your arms around me like this. Oh, darn. Come in. Pardon, Mrs. Kirk. Dinner is served. <laughs> Oh, that was, uh, 
rather good dinner, wasn't it, Helen? Oh, and most undietetic, in a <laughs> heavenly sort of way. <laughs> I've never tasted such lobster thermidor and those tiny biscuits. Yeah, oh. I guess cookout did or so. You know, this is what I've always dreamed about. Mm-hmm. Dinner at home. Two of us here alone together. <gasps> Pardon me, dear. Certainly. You know, I... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, I can fix that. I've got some pills right here in my bag. Mm-hmm. Here, take these two with a glass of water. <laughs> Thanks. It's a perfectly normal symptom, you know. Emotion and food don't mix. In a roundabout way, you're proving you love me. Darling. Wait. Why? <clears throat> <laughs> now. Oh, darling, darling. Just to know you're mine. <laughs> Just to know we're always... Confound it, I told Moody not to call us. Hello. Who? Of course not, Moody. Well, say the doctor's out. Say anything. Use your uh, head. Who is it? Oh, it's a Mrs. Roberts. Moody can just uh, No, no, tell... wait. I'll take the phone. Oh, but darling, you... hurt to talk to her. Hello. Yes, Moody, put her on. Hello, Miss Roberts. No, it's quite all right. It is, huh? Really bad. How often? Uh-huh. I will. Don't you move. I'll be over there in 20 minutes. Why, Helen... I'm you... sorry, dear. It's an emergency. But, darling, to leave Peter, now... I warned you this would happen. You said you understood thoroughly. Oh, but but not this thoroughly. Peter, I... <laughs> I don't like it either, but I've simply got to go. Want to wish me luck? Oh, yeah, of course. Good luck, darling. I'll hurry back. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Peter. Peter. Peter, I'm back. No. No. I was asleep, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Oh, darling, you know, I miss you so much. I'm so glad. You know, I'm going to tear that phone out by the roots. Hello? Oh, Vandermeer, hmm? Just a moment, Helen. Well, after all, dear, he's a patient. Oh, I give up here. Hello? Yes, Van? Oh, don't be silly. Why are you calling so late? Yes? 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 They call that a conversation, hmm? Oh, you live through the night, Van. You can drop in at the office tomorrow. What? Oh, I I couldn't now. But I can't say it now. Hmm. All right, then. You got wonderful there. The world has to be wonderful. There. Are you satisfied? <laughs> you ought to be shot. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> well, is that how a doctor speaks to a patient? He has a bad throat. He has a bad throat. Is that why you laughed? Is that why you couldn't talk in front of me, your own husband? But I had to mumble. It was embarrassing. Oh, embarrassing? Hmm? Oh, all right. I told him you were the finest man I'd ever known and that I was terribly happy. Well, just the same, I... Oh, you did, huh? (laughs) Darling, I'm such a heel. (laughs) Well, maybe we'd both feel better if you kissed me. My wife. (laughs) My own sweet wife. My... Gosh. Oh, dear, who can it be now? If I get my hands on him, he'll need a doctor. Yes. It's Moody, sir. Is there anything else? No. (laughs) Darling, it's only 6.45. It's silly for you to get up just because I have to. Well, you know what the preacher said, for better or for worse. And this is worse. Oh, definitely. (laughs) Say, why can't people be sick just after 9 a.m.? <laughs> Silly. I'm doing an appendectomy at the hospital this morning. Oh. Oh, she's in pretty bad shape, huh? Who? Well, the lady with the appendix. It's a man. A man? <laughs> well, why not? I happen to be a very capable surgeon. Well, you're also a very attractive woman. And men from the beginning of time have been nothing but scheming, treacherous wolves. <laughs> very well, then. I'm just an animal doctor. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I'm... I'm just a jealous fool. Please forgive me. Well, I shouldn't. Meaning you will? Mm. <laughs> Come on. Please kiss me. Oh. When you kiss me like that, it's sabotage. 
I lose all interest in my work. You do? You, you mean that No. You... My first duty is to Mr. Bellow's appendix. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. I'll see you at dinner. Playing second fiddle to a sick appendix. <laughs> Not even a healthy one. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, yeah, come in. Mm. Oh, hello, Moody. I thought perhaps you'd like some breakfast, sir. Moody, you know I never breakfast before ten. And what are you doing up so early? It was the telephone, sir. The hospital called at six, and Mrs. Kirk's assistant at six five, oh. and Mr. Vandermeer at six ten. <coughs> Vandermeer? What did he want? I never listen in, sir. Possibly an appointment with the doctor. He already has an appointment. Really, sir? Hmm... May I ask what that mmm means? Oh, nothing, sir. Nothing, nothing at all, sir. Then in the future, you will oblige me by never mmming before noon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Kirk, will you be going back to bed, sir? Well, I really could do it. <clears throat> no. No, no, Moody. No more of that lazy life for me. I'm going to the club and play some golf. <laughs> I live and breathe if it isn't Pete Kirk. Oh, hello, Keckle. <laughs> well, I never expected to see you at the club this early. Getting dressed for a game of golf, I see. <laughs> yeah, they won't let me wear these cleated shoes in the pool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> say, that, that's good. <laughs> oh, by the way, I want to congratulate you. From what I've heard about your bride, she must be just what the patient ordered. <laughs> what did you hear? Well, Pete, if the boys aren't lying, you better get a bottle of dandruff remover. Why, what for? To get that Vandemer out of your hair. Say, he's been raving about that girl for months. And when that wolf raves, it must be something, because he's been on the trail ever since he could walk. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what, uh, what kind of a looking fellow is he? Well, um, say if Flash Gordon was just a little gray at the temples. <laughs> Believe me, if that guy was anywhere near my wife, I'd lock her in the closet and swallow the key. Ah. Uh -huh. That type of fellow doesn't bother me. I'm not worried. Oh, no, you're not, huh? No, of course not. Mm, not a bit, huh? No, not a bit. Then tell me, why have you put your pants on backwards? <laughs> and so ends Act One of You Belong to Me, starring Mary Astor and Donna Amici. Before we hear Act Two, a word from our hostess, Lady Esther. So many women have written me in the last few weeks to make a sort of, well, a sort of confession. They tell me they used Lady Esther for purpose face cream for years and never dreamed of using anything else. Until, and here's where the confession comes in, until they began earning extra money, had more to spend. So they thought they'd try the elaborate high-priced creams that used to be beyond their reach. Some of them switched to so-called beauty treatments using several preparations instead of just one as before. But they all had the same sad story to relate. They all said their skin didn't look nearly as fresh and lovely as when they used Lady Esther face cream alone. They said pore openings seemed to look large if face powder didn't go on smoothly. They were so disappointed that they quickly changed back to Lady Esther for purpose face cream. Now, letters like that are proof my cream is different. And that difference is something you can see. After all, that's the only way to judge a face cream, by the appearance of your skin after using it. You may find that your skin looks a lot younger and more attractive after the first few applications of Lady Esther face cream. Because here's what it does. One, it thoroughly cleans your skin. Two, it softens your skin. Three, it helps nature refine the pores. And four, it leaves a perfect base for powder. So you see, all you need for the complete daily care of your skin is just this one cream, Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. And now the curtain rises on the second act of You Belong to Me, starring Mary Esther as Dr. Helen Hunt and Don Amici as Peter Kirk.
Comes now the dawn of another day, and I do mean dawn. It's 6.30 a.m. on the following morning, and Peter Kirk, who never breakfasts before 10, is having breakfast. Sleepy, darling. You, me? No, no, not at all. Just that my body can't realize I'm up. (laughs) I wish I could have slept late, too, but I've got such a busy day ahead of me. Lots of appointments, huh? Oh, lots. Didn't you say Van was coming in today? I didn't, but he is at 2 o'clock. Why? Oh, nothing. Pretty nice sort of fellow, huh? Oh, very. Uh, Peter, you're not getting... Who, me? Oh, no, not in your life. Dum, de, dum, dum, dum. 2 o'clock. What? Why, did I say something? You said, da, 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 2 o'clock. Peter, you're acting very strangely this morning. Oh, nonsense. I'm the happiest man in the world. Honest engine. Honest engine. Oh, darling, I'm so glad. I have to hurry now, but I'll be thinking of you. And I'll be thinking of you. Any hour you can name, I'll be thinking of you. 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 2. Mr. Kirk, sir, will there be anything else? No, I don't think so, Moody. Oh, uh, do you have the right time? Yes, sir, I think so, sir. It's exactly 1.30. Thank you. You're quite welcome, sir. All right, maybe it isn't cricket. Well, I'm not playing cricket. Uh, um, hello. Mr. Vandermeer in? Uh, my name is Jones, Mr. Harold Jones. Yes, that's right. Uh, I want to buy some property Mr. Vandermeer owns. Uh, can I see him this afternoon at 2? No, 2 is the only time I have open. Oh, he's tied up. With his doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he couldn't cancel it, could he? Oh, I see. No, I'll call tomorrow. Goodbye. That's a fine thing, all right. Leaving me home to fret and stew. Treating me like I didn't even count. Just because she's so doggone important. Just because I've got too much money. Well, I'll show her, all right. I'll make her sit up and take notice. I'll do something about it. I'll do something radical. I'll go to work. I... My goodness, what did I say? Peter? Oh, Helen, dear. Oh, darling, it's good to see you. I rushed right home. No, wait, wait. Look at me. Well, you look fine. Of course I do. I have won a battle. Well, uh, um, ought I see the other fellow? Oh, no, 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 not that kind. I, I, I mean a battle with myself. Oh. You know, I'll be honest, honey. When you left this morning, I was raging inside with jealousy, imagining weird, crazy things about you and Vandermeer. Oh. But, you know, I even considered going down to your office and throwing him out bodily. Oh, Peter. But I fought a battle with myself, and I won. You won't be jealous anymore. You won't imagine things. Never again. I'm a changed man. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear you say that, because I didn't see Van this afternoon. Oh, you didn't? No, I'm going to his house. His house? He's too ill to come out. It hit him quite suddenly this afternoon. I think it's the flu. But I... I'm going over there right now. I just stopped by to give you a kiss and tell you to hold dinner for me. Bye, darling. I won't be long. Oh, now it's to his house. And at night. And the moon is out. (laughs) Maybe I ought to go over there and... No, no. Nope. Nope. I'm a changed man now. Mr. Kirk, sir. Huh? Oh, Oh, yes, Moody, yeah. I beg your pardon, sir, but I noticed Mrs. Kirk was leaving again. What about dinner, sir? Oh, she'll be back by eight. It's uh, just an emergency call to Vandermeer's. Mr. Vandermeer, sir? Hmm. <laughs> Moody, are you going to start mmming again? Well, I'm awfully sorry, sir. It was just the surprise. What surprise? Well, I saw Mr. Vandermeer's cook at the market today, and she said Mr. Vandermeer was in excellent health. Oh, ho! This way, Doctor. Mr. Vandermeer is expecting Thank you, Fredericks. But why are all the cars outside? Cars, Doctor? Yes, and why is it so dark in here? Why don't you turn on the light? Surprise! Surprise! (laughs) All right, turn on the light, somebody. How do you like it, Helen? Well, Van, all of you... Well, I think you're all wonderful, but my husband... Well, we couldn't ask you both, or... Well, it wouldn't have been a surprise. I'll have Fredericks call him up now. Fredericks! Mr. Peter Kirk has just arrived, sir. 
Say, Helen, that husband of yours doesn't waste any time. You're telling me. Helen. Uh, Peter, darling, we'll I... discuss that later. You're coming home with uh, me. But Peter, oh, wait dear. A minute, and as for the rest of these people and your host, they're just a bunch of dirty tramps. What now, come along. Wait a minute. Beg pardon, ma'am. Will Mr. Kirk want his breakfast now, do you think? You might ask him, Moody. He's in the guest room. <laughs> the guest room, ma'am? Yes. Is there a comment you'd like to make? Nothing, ma'am. Nothing beyond... Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Mr. Kirk, sir. Mr. Kirk. I imagine you'll have to open the door. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Kirk, would you like some... Oh, I say, ma'am. What is it, Moody? What's wrong? The bed's not even been slept in, ma'am. Mr. Kirk is gone. <laughs> Moody. Good afternoon, Mrs. Kirk. You're home early, ma'am. Oh, I've been so distracted these past three days. I might just as well not have been at the office. Were there any calls? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mr. Vendemer. Again? And Mr. Kirk. Peter called? Well, why didn't you phone me? I was not to tell you till you came home. Well, where is he, Moody? What did he say? You're to meet him tomorrow at Hill's department store, counter seven, main floor. Ask for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins? I never knew a Jenkins in my life. <laughs> you tell me how much this tie is? Yes, it's a pleasure, madam. This tie sells for five dollars. Five dollars? Five dollars anywhere but here. During our sale, you may have this extraordinary piece of merchandise for two thirty-nine, an imported tie which we absolutely cannot replace in stock. Well, Peter. Well, of course, it is sort of pretty, Peter, but... darling. Uh, excuse me, madam. Uh, someone I have, <clears throat> one of my charge accounts, I'll be right back. Hello, honey. Peter, Kirk, you're working. Shh, not so loud. The name is Jenkins. Oh, but I am working. Twenty-two fifty a week. Oh, Peter, how wonderful. Oh, it is wonderful. Work makes you feel a lot more important. It makes, makes you want to better yourself. You know, already I've been complimented by the head of the department. No. Yes. And, Helen, about the other night... Oh, forget it, darling. I've forgotten it. You have? You mean everything is all right? Well, you think I want to lose a man with the future you've got? Why, if you can sell a tie, you can sell a piano. And if you can sell a piano, you can sell anything. Besides, I love you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, <laughs> Say, mister, about this tie, I huh? don't... Oh, oh, <clears throat> yes. Peter, I'll see you at dinner. Bye, darling. Bye. Does that always go with a charge account? <laughs> well, she's a, a very special customer. You got it's... lipstick. Oh, I have? <laughs> what do you know? Mr. Jenkins. What? Mr. Marshall yeah. wants to see you in his office. Oh, well, the manager... Oh, say, that's great. Uh, I'll be right up there when I finish this sale. I just want you to understand our position, Mr. Kirk. Our employees' club is very strong. Naturally, we can't risk any trouble. Yeah, but, but why should I cause any trouble? It seems they've discovered who you are, and they feel you shouldn't be working here, taking a job from someone who needs it. Yeah, but I need it, too. I need it more than anyone. Oh, come now, Mr. Kirk, with all your millions? Oh, it isn't the money. It's my self-respect. And my wife. And my... Uh, what's the use? You're sure there's no hope? I'm afraid not. I'll have the cashier draw your check. Four days he's been gone now, Moody. Why does he do a thing like this to us? Perhaps it was that story in the paper, ma'am, about his losing that job. Well, what's wrong with that? Anyone can lose a job. It's a whole lot worse to lose a husband. Possibly you haven't lost him yet, ma'am. I always say... I, I'll, I'll take it. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Hunt? My husband? Where? Central Hospital? Of course. Certainly I'll be right over. Which room, nurse? This one, Dr. Hunt. Thank you. Peter. Hello, honey. Peter. You mean you're not hurt? Well, how do I look? Peter Kirk, I could break your neck. Scaring me to death, pretending to be injured. Oh, darling, you've just been imagining things. It was my secretary you phoned. Your secretary? Sure. How do you like your hospital, Helen? 
My, my, my hospital? Well, half yours, anyway. I just bought it. Peter, you must be out of your mind. This place is bankrupt. It takes a fortune to run. Well, that's stuff I've got. I wouldn't call that lettuce. Oh, boy, am I going to be busy. You? Well, just on the business end, of course. Boy, will you be busy. Me? Oh, you bet your life. You're head of staff. Uh, 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 Peter, wait a minute. Uh, let me get this straight. You mean you're putting your money into this hospital knowing you'll get nothing in return? Oh, uh, what do you mean, nothing? I'll be helping the sick. I'll, I'll be making jobs for doctors, nurses. Interns, too. Yeah, maybe a lot of other people I don't even know about. You should see all the patients in here. A lot of kids, I'll bet. Oh, yeah, paralysis, broken bones. We'll make them all well. Listen, you're just as excited as I oh, am. Oh, of course. Oh, Peter, darling, I love you so. Well, gosh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, doctor, would you like to see your first patient now? Who? Me. I think that last kiss gave me a temperature. Thank you, Don Amici and Mary Astor, for appearing with the Lady Astor Screen Guild players tonight. We are indeed grateful for your fine performance. We're glad to be here, Mr. Bradley. We look forward to our appearances with the Lady Esther Screen Guild players because we know that the benefits from these programs go to support the Motion Picture Relief Fund, Country House, and Clinic. And now, before we tell you about next week's program, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Thank you, Miss Astor. Ladies, do you know how you can tell the difference between one face cream and another? Well, there's only one sure way, and that's by the appearance of your skin after using the cream. If the cream you use leaves your skin looking very much the same, if it still has a dingy or pasty look and shows no real improvement, well, don't blame it on your skin. Blame it only on your face cream. For if you use Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream, you will see a difference. You will see a real improvement in your skin. Lady Esther Face Cream works with nature and helps nature. It thoroughly cleans out the clogged pore openings so that they can function normally again. It loosens and absorbs the dry little flakes that tend to make your skin look rough and bumpy. It seems to bring back the lovely, delicate texture of youth by helping nature refine the pores. And it leaves such a smooth base for powder that women say the effect is simply enchanting. The very first time you use Lady Esther face cream, you'll see how much cleaner and fresher your skin looks, how it seems to revive, to take on the appearance of new life and beauty. And never again will you judge a face cream by its package, its price, or its popularity. You'll judge it only by what it does for your skin. Seeing is believing. So try Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream soon. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present George Washington Slept Here. It will star Carol Landis and Jack Carson. Be sure to listen. Don Amici can soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Happy Land. Mary Astor can currently be seen in the Metro-Golden-Mayer Technicolor musical, Thousands Cheer. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. For economy's sake, get the largest size of Lady Astor for purpose face cream and the larger sizes of Lady Esther face powder. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther, saying thank you and good night, all. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.